Hello everyone, this is Diesel D199 speaking, and it's time to answer the final lot of questions. Today I will be answering all of the questions submitted to me regarding the Thomas the Tank Engine community channel, and any other miscellaneous questions which didn't fit into any of the other categories. So let's get started with the Thomas the Tank Engine community channel. The first question is what was the inspiration for the Thomas the Tank Engine community channel, and how did it begin? Well, the first idea that I had for it originally came to me in 2008, and back then I wasn't interested in making video so much as I was uh, doing it through pictures. So I thought about starting a thread on Soda Island forums where basically, you know, the first person would, would post three pictures replicating three shots from the episode, and then the next person post the next three set as pictures, and so on and so forth. Um, I think I posted it. I can't remember. I do remember taking the pictures, um, but when I went back to find it, I, I couldn't find it, so it might have been deleted. At any rate, I know that it didn't take off. It didn't go anywhere. Um, and then in 2013, I saw that Star Wars Episode Four had been completely remade. Uh, by the community. I think it was actually organized by uh, LucasArts. But I thought, well, you know, we, the Thomas the Tank Engine community, we do a lot of remakes anyway, and we do, we, we are best suited for making video, um, what with the nature of Thomas and Friends. So I thought that uh, it would definitely be plausible to do a community remake of an episode at least one, just to see how it would go. And I thought about what would be the method for this, because the Star Wars one, they had a dedicated website, and, you know, you could reserve clips through all sorts of, uh, you know, you, you, you could select the clip, and I, I don't know, I didn't participate in it, but um, certainly I thought, I've got to come up with a way of doing this on YouTube, you know, um, because we don't want to have to make people make other accounts or anything like that. So let's try and do it all on YouTube. And eventually I figured out a way, which you guys are all familiar with, I'm sure. And um, then I figured, well, you know, I can't do this by myself. So I got in contact with some other people that I uh, knew were, you know, big in the Thomas the Tank Engine community channel on YouTube. I think I sent... Uh, an inbox to about 10 people. Um, and some of them didn't reply at all. Some of them just, uh, yeah, couldn't be a part of it. And um, then obviously, you know, four people did reply. Um, and that's Enterprising Engine 93, Percy Engine 619, UC Weapon, and Sidekick Jason. And they said that, yes, they would help out and they would... Uh, be the admins alongside with me. And, um, you know, one of the great things about having them on board was, you know, together we have quite a lot of subscribers. So, you know, we were able to advertise the channel and get a lot of people coming in. And yeah, that's that's basically how it all, all began. Um, I was very lucky for them to come on board and help out with it. And uh, I'm hoping that the TTA community channel will go on for a long time yet. What will the next Thomas the Tank Engine community remake be, and when will it begin? Uh, I know you guys are very keen. Uh, some people still haven't managed to get a clip yet. Certainly, we are working on it. Um, I can tell you that much. I can't tell you when exactly it will begin. We are hoping within the next month or two, though. And uh, we have decided on what episode it will be. But uh, beyond that, I'm not going to say any more. So you're just going to have to wait and see. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And you'll be notified whenever there's any news. Take Along Conductor asked, If you were directing the next Community Remake, what episodes would you choose? Well, I would choose an episode that's not in Season 1, because we've done three Season 1 episodes so far. And I would choose one where neither Thomas nor Gordon are the main characters because they've uh, featured pretty heavily so far. So I'd try and choose an episode that's from season two, three, four or five probably and one where, you know, James or Henry or some other engine is uh, the main character and Thomas and Gordon uh, d don't feature heavily in. 
PercyFan1998 asked, What is it like to be a project director for a Thomas the Tank Engine community project? Uh, stressful, in one word. Um, certainly, it's really great to see everyone participating and, you know, to see how quickly all of the clips get reserved right at the beginning. That, that's always been quite a thrill. Um, you know, for the first community project, we weren't sure if we would get enough people and we might have to ask that people do multiple clips. But, you know, within the first hour or so, all of the clips were gone. And so that was that was beyond our wildest expectations. But yes, it can be stressful because um, there's a lot of people to deal with. And certainly for the next community project, we are going to be implementing some changes in the method to try and make it less stressful and make it more easy to organize. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, at the end of the project, invariably there's a few people who still haven't submitted clips and you try and get in contact with them and that doesn't work out. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not that bad. It's... A lot of work and it does take some focus, but um, there's a really good feeling at the end when everything is done. Dawil Stoneda asked, when it comes to the community channel, which of the two projects do you personally think were the best in terms of producing and the outcome of the final product? Well, uh, that's hard to answer. I mean, all three of the episodes which we remade um, all looked pretty well actually yeah they all looked fairly good i don't think there was much change in the quality of the video um certainly for me uh the first project was a bit easier to do because there was only one episode um i didn't realize how much extra pressure it would add to be doing two episodes um but you know i mean it's you really can't decide uh, because I think the, the the final product and the production was fairly consistent so far, which is uh, which has been good. Um, you know, I mean, one of the great things about doing these projects is you get to see um, the styles of so many different YouTubers, and you get to see you know all the various different qualities um, that different YouTubers have. So uh, you know, it you can't really decide. Track M Fan Homer asked, "Do you get sick of me doing clips for the Thomas the Tank Engine community channel?" Um, no, I don't. Uh, you know, I just you need to put a bit more effort in uh, the first time round and try and make your clips more similar uh, to the well to the you know the original clip. Um, you know, for those of you who don't know, which is probably everyone, um, you know, Track M Fan Homer has been trying hard. Um, but, you know, we've, we've been offering uh, advice to imp improve his clips, um, which we do for many people, actually. You know, we want to encourage everyone to participate, but we kind of have like a minimum standard for quality, like um, an absolute minimum. For example, we don't want any clips that have hands in them or, or people or anything like that. So um, if your clip does have that in there, you know, you will be asked to redo it generally. And, you know, we don't want to do that condescendingly. We we are genuinely trying to improve the quality of content here on YouTube, and we are quite happy to give advice to people. You know, I remember um, in the first community project, there was one guy, and he was having a bit of difficulty. Uh, you know, the lighting was really bad and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, I gave him some advice. And when he came back for the next community project, he'd improved dramatically. And, and that's the kind of uh, progress which we want to see throughout YouTube. So, you know, keep trying Track M Fan Home. I will keep giving you advice, but make sure you put in your absolute best effort the first time round, and you know you may not have to redo them in future. All right, now it's time to go on to the miscellaneous questions. This is sure to be interesting. Who are your favorite Thomas and Friends YouTubers? Well, I've actually made my subscriptions list public, so anyone can go into my channel and click on my subscriptions, and you can see the full list of everyone that I'm subscribed to. Um, this is, uh, my, my channel only is subscribed to Thomas and Friends YouTubers, however, so I can better keep in contact with the community at a glance rather than having to filter through all the other subscriptions that I have. And, um, you know, I mean, Enterprising Engine 93 series is a favorite of mine. Uh, Sidekick Jason, I can't wait for season two of his series. Um, Percy Engine 619, I think he has probably the most expansive collection of remakes 
uh, on YouTube. I mean, I, <laughs> he's done most of the episodes from the earlier seasons, and on top of that, he's done loads of later episodes too, um, and they're always getting better. Um, you know, UC Weapon and Toy Trains for You are my first stop for when it comes to um, uh, the various reviews, and I've been paying... Uh, close attention to reviews lately because of the uh, new Trackmaster engines. Um, and uh, Sudrian Afro does the most amazing Thomas and Friends music. I mean, I don't think there's any point in having that uh, the, the petition to have the original tunes released at this point because his, his uh, recreations, I mean, I couldn't even try and uh, point out any differences between them and the original stuff. So, um, yeah, those are just some of my favorite YouTubers. You can see the full list on my channel. And if there's anyone missing from that list, anyone who you think makes really great content that should be on there, then uh, just comment on this video. I'm always trying to uh, keep tabs on the community as a whole, and I always want to be able to see the best stuff out there. So let me know. Dockside Salty zero one asked, "What tips do you have for people starting their own Thomas and Friends series?" Uh, this is something I get asked quite a lot, actually. You know, um, I remember when Sidekick Jason, uh, before his uh, first series, was asking me for advice, and many people have over the years. Um, and I think that there are some key points that need to be realised. Uh, firstly you need to have good lighting. Uh, this is something that a lot of YouTubers fall down on. You need to have a steady camera. You need to have a clean set. You don't necessarily have to have a backdrop and, you know, grass laid down and all of that sort of stuff. Certainly it does help. But, you know, if you just clean up your set so there's no, you know, there's not a big pile of crashed trains in the background or something like that, um, that's, that's always helpful. Uh, you know, you're going to have to try and have a reasonably good quality microphone. Uh, you want to sound nice and clear. Um, and then, yeah, on top of that, one of the, the most important things is sound effects for making these toy trains come to life. Um, I, like I've mentioned earlier, I don't particularly like adding sound effects, but that is probably the point in the editing process where everything starts to come together. So you do want to make sure that you add some sound effects there. And one of the things that I would uh, recommend is that if you're making it with Thomas models, you mute all of the video which you get, and then you add the narration and the sound effects and the music over the top. So you shouldn't have any of the original audio in there. Um, and yeah, that's really my, my best advice, I guess. Um, you know, uh, Certainly, when you do go to do your own series, make sure you do the best that you can do. There's a lot of junk on YouTube, and you want to be able to stand out from that. So, uh, you know, try your best, basically, and you will get there. You'll improve over the years. I mean, I've been making these videos for too long, probably. About eight years I've been making Thomas and Friends videos, and... Uh, you know, always trying to get better and always trying to improve. And when I look at my earlier stuff, you know, it's amazing how far I've come. And you can do that too. So, uh, yeah, that, that would be my advice. The next question comes from Lewis Campbell and Donald9 and Douglas10. Do you like my YouTube series? I can't remember if I've actually checked out your series yet and given you any feedback. If I haven't, then remind me in the comment section. But this is a question I get asked a lot. You know, people are always asking me to come check out their YouTube channel and tell them what I think. And, you know, certainly I'm willing to do that if I have the spare time. I'll check it out and I'll leave you a comment on your channel page. And uh, hopefully I can provide you with some constructive feedback. The next question comes from CGI Ben and Coldy the number four. Will you voice a character in my series? To be fair, I think they did actually specify that this wasn't part of the Q&A, but it is something that I get asked quite often. Um, I'm not really... I, I don't want to make commitments that I can't keep, basically. So I will more often than not um, be willing to, to do a one-off voice. Um, in a series, so, so you know, to guest feature, I guess you could say, but I'm, I'm not willing to make any, 
any more commitments than I already have because uh, I know I won't be able to keep up with them. Ben asked, do you have a favourite show outside of the Thomas and Friends community? What are your thoughts on that show? And I'm guessing you mean an internet show. Um, and my favourite show for a long time was Red vs. Blue, although I haven't uh, gotten around to seeing the latest season yet. But certainly I, I've always thought it was hilarious and I'm a very big fan of Halo, so uh, that sure helped getting me on board with that. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I mean, there's most popular girls in school. That's probably not appropriate. Neither of these shows are probably appropriate for a lot of you. Um, but they're both good. They're both good. They're both funny. Um, and I enjoy watching them. What do you think about the A1 Steam Trust building an LNERP2? Well, I don't know that much about it. Certainly, it's always interesting to hear about, you know, modern steam engines. Um, not that there are that many. I understand that there's a couple projects actually going on to uh, rebuild old engines or improve upon them. Um, and, you know, certainly I always think that's, that, that would definitely be something interesting to see. Um, not overly useful, but uh, certainly a great novelty engine, I guess. Do you like Tugs? I'm actually ashamed to say that I've never watched Tugs. I thought about it before, and I think I remember looking up the episodes on YouTube a couple of times. Like, I've seen a few clips from it, but I've never actually sat down and watched the show. Um, I certainly think that the original footage should be re-scanned, and then, you know, the, the episodes can be released on DVD and Blu-ray, um, or even rebroadcast. You know, but uh, I haven't personally ever sat down and watched uh, the episodes. I really should get onto that, though. Trainboy7 asked, Do you like Chuggington? No. I've never watched a full episode, admittedly, but I have watched parts of it. You know, I've tried to watch it and just been like, this is, this is rubbish. Uh, to me, it seems like it's a train show that Shannon Miller would have written. Um, quite frankly, it's not, I, I don't find it particularly appealing to watch. I guess you could say that I'm glad that Thomas and Friends was started in the 1980s when, uh, you know, this kind of CGI technology wasn't available and we got to have a show made with real model trains because, you know, maybe if the show had been adapted, you know, in modern times, it would have been as ridiculous as Chuggington. But no, I don't like it, and uh, I, <laughs> I don't follow it, and I have no intention of doing so. I'd be interested to hear what your guys, what all you think about it, though. Um, you know, so tell me what you think about Chuggington in the comments section. Are you a brony? No, I'm not. Uh, I've never watched the show, honest, in all honesty. Um, I... When I was much, much younger, I remember seeing, like, the the original movie with, like, witches in it or something like that, but uh, that's the extent of it. Um, it seems to be very popular amongst the Thomas and Friends community. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems that a lot of people who like Thomas are also bronies. I'm not sure why there is that connection, but certainly it seems a... A bit weird. We we lost uh, Train Lover 476 and Miss Oliver and Blossom to the uh, brony fandom. But yeah, it's it's not for me. Uh, certainly, I'm, I'm not interested in the show. <laughs> Creeper Mikey asked, Do you like Shrek? Yeah, the first one. Um, the other ones are all right, but the first one was the best. Do you watch Doctor Who? Um, no, I have seen a couple of episodes of it, and I have not been thus far impressed. So I've got no intention of watching it. Lewis Campbell asked, Do you watch Total Drama? No, I think I may have seen bits and pieces of it on like, what is it, broadcast on Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon, one of the two. Um, but n no, I don't watch it. Hunter VS and Oliver GWR asked, Are you a gamer? Yes, um... I'm not a hardcore gamer, I'm a reasonably casual gamer. Uh, the two games which I play the most at the moment are Star Wars The Old Republic, which is free to play, um, and Age of Mythology Extended Edition, because I used to play Age of Mythology when it you know, first came out many years ago, and it's uh, great to be playing online again on that game. 
Um, but yeah, those are my uh, the two games that I'm really playing at the moment. Um, in addition to them, some of my other favorite games include um, the the Halo series that I'm really big on. You know, I might I haven't decided yet. I may buy an Xbox One so I can play Halo Five when it comes out. Um, and from my younger years, you know, I really enjoy Jack and Daxter, The Simpsons Hit and Run, and a whole bunch of other games. Uh, I mentioned before that I have played Slender, and I have played the sequel, Slender The Arrival. Um, but yeah, I'm not a hardcore gamer, but then again, I'm not that casual either. I'm somewhere in between. I, pe- I play, uh, you know, maybe an hour or so of video games a day. Maybe less. It depends. Some days I don't play at all. What is your favorite game? Well, of the ones I just listed them, probably my absolute favorite would have to be... Of all time, it would probably have to be Age of Mythology. Of all time, that would be my favorite game. Um, Certainly right now, my favorite game is Star Wars The Old Republic, though. Callum Drew asked, Do you play Minecraft? No, I have... Uh, seen a lot of Minecraft, but I've never really gotten the appeal of playing it, and so I haven't ever really tried to play it yet. Uh, Maybe I will get around to it at some point. What is your favorite fizzy drink? I think this question was actually asked as, what fizzy drink do you like to drink when you're uh, making videos? And uh, my favorite fizzy drink, I guess, would be Coke. But I try and avoid fizzy drink. I would rather drink water most of the time, honestly, or have a milkshake or something like that. Um, Because most fizzy drinks, they are pretty damn bad for you, and uh, it's best to avoid them. What interests slash hobbies do you have outside of Thomas and Friends? Well, I'm a gamer, for one, which you now know. Um, I'm interested in making films in general. Uh, You know, one of the things that brought me back to Thomas and Friends was the fact that I could, in fact, film it very, very easily. Um, Apart from that, you know, well, one of my favorite shows at the moment is Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead and uh, American Horror Story I also like. Uh, What other interests do I have? Well, I'm I'm interested in a lot of things. You know, politics I'm very interested in. I I take great interest in science. For example, um, you know, particularly uh, astronomy and paleontology. And yeah, those are my interests and hobbies, I guess. How old are you? Uh, I'm not going to give you a specific answer, but too old to be watching Thomas and Friends, but I think that's quite apparent. Um, It is, you know, interesting to see how many other people are of a similar age to me, and, you know, they do still watch the show, and they make series here on YouTube, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of them are probably similar to me in the fact that one of the things that brought them back was the fact that it's very easy to film, and they're interested in film. Um, You know, one of the interesting things is, you know, I remember there's a thread on Soda Island forums asking people whether they keep their interest in the show a secret, and if there's one thing I advice which I can give to all of you who may be feeling a bit... uh, insecure or whatever, embarrassed, because they still like a show that's primarily directed at preschoolers, is that, you know, in those early teen years, uh, everyone is so keen on growing up so fast, but that'll change by the time you get to your late teens. Um, And, you know, if you look at how big the brony fandom is at the moment, or, you know, there's a lot of people obsessed with Adventure Time, Um, you know, you've got nothing to feel ashamed about, that's for sure. So, uh, be proud that you like Thomas and Friends. It's a great show. Where do you live? Well, I'm not going to go into specifics, but, uh, Australia. And now it's time for the final question. Why don't you ever show your face? Well, uh, some other YouTubers don't seem to mind showing their faces, and we all know what they look like. Um, Me, personally, I'm quite happy to stay behind the camera. I've done it for my entire YouTube career, and I'm quite happy to keep doing that in the future. I'd rather uh, keep Thomas in front of the camera, rather than me being there. And that's it. Uh, I hope I've answered everyone's questions to satisfaction. 
Um, thank you all for submitting all of your questions. Um, there were a few questions that I know that I didn't include because I didn't understand what was being asked of me. Um, if you're one of those people, uh, try and reword your question and post it in the comment section of this video and I'll just answer with a text reply. If you've got any other general questions that you don't feel uh, that I've gotten around to answering or any questions that you feel I didn't answer adequately, you know, leave me a comment and I'll try and get around to answering those questions. But uh, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I had a great time doing this and answering all of your questions. Um, it'll be a long time before I do another one of these because, you know, I've answered so many here, I think around about 105. Uh, but, you know, certainly I'm not put off doing it in the future, so we'll see. Uh, in the meantime, you can continue to ask me questions in the comment section on my various videos, and hopefully I will get round to answering those. So thank you very much, everyone. This is Diesel D199 signing off.